in front of us we have what I think is a pretty cool 3D printing project. This is the gauge cluster out of my dad's 1965 GMC. It's a custom truck that needs custom gauges to go with it. So we are going to design and 3D print an insert for this to hold those gauges in this video. Designing something like this is deceptively difficult. Getting down in there and measuring all of the proper spacings, everything is slightly radiused or tapered. It's just not that straightforward. So we are going to use 3D scanning to make it happen. The folks at EinScan sent over this, their EinStar 3D scanner, a sub $1,000 scanner. We're gonna use this to make this project a reality. Now, they are not sponsoring this video and this is not a review of this scanner. This video does have a sponsor though, that is World of Warships. Are you ready to embark on epic naval adventures? Set sail in this beautifully rendered free to play PC game today. Test your skills by commanding a wide range of mighty vessels from history in epic battles on the high seas. World of Warships keeps it fun and interesting with new content each month. This month they're introducing the iconic and whimsical characters of Popeye and Bluto to the mix. Like me, Popeye is fueled by spinach. Unlike me, he's not afraid of the open ocean, so he's actually a good choice to command your naval adventures. Oh, and did I mention World of Warships is available on console as well. Check it out for yourself today at the first link in the description. Be sure to use sign up code Popeye to get 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 10 days of premium time, and your choice of one of four classic ships after 15 battles. One last note for 3D printers specifically, you can get the STLs for this adorable Captain Bad Advice 3D model, which is surprisingly well designed on printables right now. That link is also in the description. I was gonna finish this with a joke about getting distracted by the game, but I actually got distracted by the game while filming this. I've gotta get back to this 3D scanning project, but sign up at the link in the description, get playing World of Warships today. This was my personal project that now has become my dad's. It has a LQ4 six liter V8 engine out of a 2004 2500 HD pickup truck nestled into that 1965 GMC engine bay. This thing is running on air ride suspension and it will lay the frame on the ground when it's aired out. I've already 3D printed a handful of add-ons to this thing like separators for the custom fuel and air lines and a recess mount into the dash for the touchpad for the air ride control system system. But there's a big gaping hole in the dash right now, the gauges. This truck's over 50 years old and it was probably a work truck for most of that time. I dragged it out of a field in Texas when I picked it up, so the dashboard on this was pretty grimy. First things first, I gotta strip this thing down and clean it up, removing the old gauges. All it really had was a speedometer and a fuel gauge and a couple of idiot lights. The easiest option to clean it up was popping it into the dishwasher. Pretty quick way to go from dirty to clean. Definitely did that while Ruby was at work. And that leaves us our base dash piece that I am going to be building off of and using in this project. I'm not making an entirely 100% new piece, but I am replacing 95% of it. Now my previous goes at 3D scanning were unpleasant. The best I ever really got was this scan of my head that I've never been very happy with. All I had before was a Revo Point pop scanner that they sent me forever ago. This thing seemed to lose tracking every approximately 2.5 seconds and I was never happy with the software that it used. It was buggy, didn't make much use of my powerful computer, so it was very slow and it's had a bunch of options that seemed to be grayed out for no apparent reason. So in came the Shining 3D EinScan. Getting this thing out of its packaging, its first impression was that it's a much more robust and higher quality feeling product for not a lot more money than the pop scanner. It has a locking cable that goes into it, though it was a little shorter than I might like. Overall, the build quality of it at the very least felt good. This thing has down to a 0.1 millimeter resolution on small objects, though on an object of this scale, it seems to be down to 0.2 millimeter resolution. That should be plenty good enough for what I'm trying to achieve here. Definitely better than I'm going to do with just a metric tape measure. With the scanner set up, a taken apart and clean bezel, it's time to start scanning. You can clearly see I ended up putting a lot more markers on this thing than I might have anticipated needing to just to keep a good track. This scanner didn't lose tracking nearly as badly or often as a pop scanner did, but it definitely needed a little assistance on this piece. I think this was partly down to both my skill with using it 
and also my preparation. All I did was clean it and start scanning the thing. I should have probably sanded the surface or if I had a media blast cabinet, maybe given it a really light blast to give it a more matte finish on it because the shiny surfaces were having a hard time scanning. You can actually see areas where there's glass for the gauges. I ended up spray painting a little bit just to get a non-reflective surface to have this thing pick up and not get confused looking through the glass. I spent way too much time scanning this, and that's one thing I probably do wrong when it comes to 3D scanning is I just keep going over and over and over surfaces trying to get every nook and cranny and detail of an object. I didn't really need that for this project, but I wanted to just show you folks the detail I could create with this scanner. I will note that Revo Point specifically told me not to over scan things like that, going over and over them to get every little detail, because that would lead to a little confusion in the point cloud and like fuzzy texture on the outside of my scans that just wasn't there in reality. Though I found the Ein scan just did a better job handling that overall. With every nook and cranny scanned on this thing, I can move on to exporting a file that I can then start working with to design. So I'm going to export an OBJ file that I can open up in Blender or what I'd use, Autodesk Fusion 360. Now this render has a lot of detail, a lot of polygons going on, and that is hard in Fusion. It doesn't handle that exceptionally well. So I'm gonna have to reduce the amount of detail in there. That shouldn't matter since I'm not looking to one-to-one -to -one reproduce this component. I'm looking to just kind of use dimensions off of it to design my part. What I'm really looking to do here is cut most of the inner section of this out. Only use the outer edge of it, the rim of this piece, which is what bolts into the truck. Then I'm going to make a whole new center section for this that accepts our new gauges. Those new gauges being a set of autometer gauges, two five inch gauges and a single three and three eighths tachometer. Before I put a bunch of time into designing the mount for the gauges, I need to ensure my dimensions are accurate. I don't know that the 3D scan that I produced is actually accurate to the original piece. So I'm gonna do something I do a lot in my design process where I actually print just test components before I dive into my full actual project. For the gauge bezel itself, I created a sketch in Fusion 360 that just followed along with the 3D scan that I had. It's the best way I could come up with to work off of this 3D scan. The goal here was to create something that would fit to the inside of this thing, which is the hardest part of this project for me, trying to measure this inside recessed area in the gauge and then ensure my dimensions are accurate. After getting to a point where I was pretty satisfied with the sketch I created, I extruded it and then exported a body so I could send it to a 3D printer. I used the Chidi X Max 3 for this entire project because it's the only machine I had that had a big enough build volume that's currently working. I wanted to use my Voron 2.4, but it's out of commission at the moment. Video on that soon. Once my print's complete, I can pop it off the bed and then I can drop it into the gauge bezel itself and check how it fits, taking my 2D design from in CAD to into the real world. I did this for the top and bottom of this rim that goes around the edge of the bezel because that's the key dimensions I really need to worry about here. And it did take me a couple of attempts to get this where I needed it. I did the same thing for the gauges as well, creating a couple of quick sleeves that have the proper tolerance to slide over them. And that'll give me the bore that I need for the gauges to fit into in the design. With those core dimensions established, I can dive into the full on design. I'm gonna go ahead and condense down 10 hours of design time into just a few seconds for you folks. Followed by about 18 hours of printing time where I was printing in Polymaker ASA. So this will be nice and temperature stable, UV stable, and should allow me to finish this piece off really nicely, as well as fuse together the two halves. I haven't printed with this printer a lot, nor this filament on this printer, so it wasn't tuned in nearly as nicely as I would like, and I'm not thrilled with the final print results. While this is probably gonna get some finishing work and a coat of paint in the truck, I think I'm probably gonna end up reprinting these parts on my Voron once I get it fixed. But for this video, for confirmation of everything fitting, we're good to move forward. And after all that work, I have two pieces that fit together to create my new gauge cluster. But that means that I have to now cut up this original one. There are a couple of tools I'm gonna to use for this job. I've got Drill Handy, 
oscillating multi-tool and an air body saw or air reciprocating saw. A toady saws all. I'm gonna start with the oscillating multi-tool to cut off some of these bosses on the back side of this. I am going to be retaining a bit of the edges of this bezel so that both the new piece has something to rest against in the back side and also to bolt to. That's because on the back side of my new gauge cluster are various holes for heat press inserts. They're gonna get inserted into there and then screws will pass through the original bezel into the back side of this to hold it in place with no visible hardware. And now it's time to cut, cut, and cut some more. I actually ended up using the oscillating multi-tool pretty much exclusively to do this. Shaving off the bezels, the actual trim areas around the original gauges allowed me to get flush, flat areas. So I'm gonna have more material to butt my new gauge cluster against. And I, I like that. I'd rather have more material to work with than not enough. And with all that cutting done, there's now one less complete GMC gauge cluster in the world. They don't reproduce this part. So uh, yeah, the rest are worth more now. Now we are gathered here today to join these two halves of this cluster together. I don't think I mentioned earlier that it was made in two pieces because the overall length is just over 500 millimeters long. So no machine I currently have would fit this into its build volume, especially printing it in a material like ASA. To make my life easier putting this together, I put dowel holes in the ends of each of the halves. So I'm gonna stick some eighth inch TIG rod into there to use for alignment and strengthening the joint. As both of these are ASA, I'm gonna be using acetone to do the job. If you aren't familiar, acetone will melt ASA filament when applied to it, ABS as well. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage and create a bond via that melting. I'll apply a liberal amount of acetone to both of the mating surfaces, and then using the dowels to help me guide it into the proper position, I will clamp it together. Here, I'm functioning as the clamp myself, pushing it together and allowing that chemical bond to happen because the two sides are melted, they'll kind of melt into each other. Acetone can also be used to smooth out ABS and ASA filaments, either through vapor smoothing or I'm applying it manually here just to see around the tachometer area how it's going to look and see if maybe I want to do some smoothing on the final product. And now with this bonded together, I can stick the gauges in here and show you the final product. Overall, I am really happy with the result that I got here. It's not perfect by any means. It's a proof of concept. I had hoped it would be the final product, but it's a good proof of concept. And it shows me a few spots where I can improve the final design when I go to reprint it. This is a project I put off for way too long. Every time I sat down and started to design it and started to measure everything out manually, I just kept running into stumbling blocks that really discouraged me from doing the project. So I put it on the back burner much longer than I should have. This Einstar scanner made it a breeze. One, two days worth of work, I was able to produce a solid scan that I was able to build a top of and produce this proof of concept right here. I'm sure it's pretty clear by this point, I am by no means an authority on 3D scanners, so take it with a grain of salt, but this was a significantly better 3D scanning experience for me than my previous attempts. There will be a link in the description to the Einstar scanner if you wanna check it out for yourself. One more design detail that I'm sure some of you have noticed missing here is the four holes around the center tachometer. Those those are going to be the indicators, so turn signals, high beam, and check engine light. I'm going to resin print some colored pieces to go into those and backlight them with LEDs. I just didn't have a chance to do that this week for this video. My resin printers are currently in storage. So I'll get to that in a future video, maybe. I really wish I could have gotten this fit into the truck for this video. Unfortunately, my parents live about 10, 12 hours away from me, so it's gonna be a little bit before I get down there. Check out my other social medias. I'll definitely post some pictures when I get this installed in the truck with the final build. All right, folks, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Hope you found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy this one. It's actually working on the C10 build on my other YouTube channel, or this one over here that YouTube thinks is best for you. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.